especially if you are a master at using Flexbox, it could be really hard to envision when you might reach for grid. So I wanted to give some examples of when I reach for grid from both a very simple example of just centering something inside of a div that's not a meme, all the way to the very end where you have a much more complex and responsive design. You ready? Let's jump in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. All right, let's jump in with these quick five examples. First of all, this doesn't have to be a CSS meme. Sometimes you have to center things, right? And for me, the easiest way to center things is with grid. So let's jump over to the CSS and grab my footer. And I'm just gonna say display of grid and then place items center. Now this means that the internal items inside of the grid will be in the center, both vertically and horizontally. So this is a shorthand for align item center and justify items center. So the items are the individual grid cells. And here I'm saying, take all the internal grid cells and put it in the center of their grids. Now this is, obviously there's other ways to do this, like just text align center, but especially once you start getting multiple things in here, if you want them to all be in the center, this is the quickest, easiest, and two line way to do this. Whether you're dealing with text or with items like an image or anything like that, it will always get it into the center. All right, so that's the first example. Let's jump over to the second example. These are all very hard coded, but just to kind of keep them separate so you can see what's going on. Here we've got a card and you'll notice that I've got an image, I've got this title, some description and a button down this way. I am using open props just to kind of give us some quick styling right here. So you'll notice that there are some things that are affected by that. I'll let you play around with that. But for me, whenever I'm dealing with a single vertical column, I typically always reach for grid. Now you could do flex and then obviously change the flex direction. But in this case, grid is already vertically aligned. So why not just use it for a single column like this? So a simple display of grid will automatically have some impact. Number one, it looks about the same, except that inline elements here, like this button, now take the full width because it's now a grid child. It's neither a inline or a block element, it's a grid child. So there are some other things we'll have to do here, but in the more modern way of thinking about CSS, I'm now letting the parent control the spacing rather than the individual children. So in the past, you may come over here and you may add like margin top and bottom to this and margin top and bottom here, but then it all depends on where it's situated relative to other children. So what I can do instead is just say, hey, no matter what children are in here, I always wanna have a gap of like 0.5 rem at the very minimum between these. And then if I wanna add extra margin, I can go apply that to an individual item. So I could come in here and say my H2, here using modern nesting in CSS, I could say I also want like margin top and I could add like, I don't know, 0.5 rem to that as well. So I've added a little bit more, but the parent controls most of the spacing. Now, like I mentioned, this is now a grid child. So this button is full width. So there's a couple things we can do. If I always know that I want my buttons to only ever take up the space that they need, I could set the width here to something like fit content, and this will work here. The other thing I could do is since it's a grid child now, inside of grid parents, I can set the justify self to something like start. And that will have the same exact effect, but obviously this would only work for inside of grid containers. So for me, I would typically reach for something like width of fit content. If you're interested in fit content or min content or max content, I've done a video on the past on that. I'll try to remember to link it. All right, so that's one option you could do. However, since we're working with a parent, let's just say that all the children should be justify items right here. We'll just say start, and that will have the same effect and it will work anytime inside of any of these cards. Now, while we're at it, I'm going to also come in here and just say like, this should be a max width of something like 400 pixels. And there we go. All right. So maybe we should add a little padding as well. And I'll add a border just for good measure, two pixels solid. And then I've got some extra little helps here with open props that I'm using for some basic styling. There you go. We got a nice cart. So that's the second example, a single vertical column. Here's where I would typically reach for grid. All right. Third example right over here we're starting to get into massive page layouts. So let's come back over here. I'm gonna close some of these down and we'll look at number three. So you can see here, I've got the navigation, I've got the main, and the main has some stuff inside of it. It has a card, it has some text up above. So I've got several things I might wanna think about. If I collapse this down, the basic structure I have is a nav, a main, and a footer. So I can actually set this up with grid and typically with these kind of massive page layouts, that's how I like to work. So if I come back over here, let's jump up top here. And I don't think I even have a body declaration yet. So let's grab my body here. I'm going to set this to display of grid. Now by default, not too much changes. There's a couple spacing things that change. But what I can do is use the grid template rows and set up how I want these things to interact. I know I've got three basic sections here. I've got my nav, I've got my body, and I've got my footer. So my nav, I only want to take up the space it needs. That would be auto. My footer, I only want it to take up the space it needs. And in the middle, I just want to say, give all the leftover space to the body. So here I'd set this to one FR. Now you'll notice what this does is the nav will always be at the top 
and the footer will always be at the bottom. So even as I move through these, you'll notice these are all centered. That's actually a different declaration I'll show you in a second, but the nav is already at the top and the footer is always at the bottom, no matter how much content I have in the middle. Now, the reason these things are being centered is because of another, it's another declaration I have right here, display grid, place item center. If I get rid of this, that will no longer be the case. So notice here, this will all stick to the top, etc. But you'll notice that this takes up the rest of the space. Then I've got the footer at the bottom. I've got the nav at the top always, no matter what. So depending on kind of how you want to lay it out, you can do it different ways here. But for me, I really like this kind of grid layout system for the entire section. And to see it more clearly, you can actually open up the dev tools. And if I just click on this little grid, el grid element here, you'll see that this is taking up the auto space it needs. This is taking up the auto space that it needs. And then everything else is in the center. Now, again, I've happened to use the display grid on all the main content, but you don't have to do that. But either way, now you've got control over where this is at and the footer is always pushed down to the bottom, no matter how much content you have on the screen. Maybe we should actually come down here and add some padding here to the footer as well, just so it looks kind of similar. So we'll say padding here and I'll say like one rem. Okay, there we go. So now at least it looks similar. So that's another example. This would be working with like full page layouts. All right, fourth example where I reach for grid is with more complex positioning. So let's imagine you get a design spec where you want this card kind of like right here, right? So sometimes you'll reach for something like absolute positioning, but there are other things that you have to take into account with absolute positioning. What you might want to do is on different screen sizes, change where that card is. And it's a lot kind of funkier working with position absolute. What I could do instead is declare an exact row grid column and place this exactly where I want it to be. So let's jump over to that example. This would be example number four right over here. And if I come down here, you'll notice that I've got this card here. It's called hero. I've got an image, and then I've also got this hero card section. I've already applied some styling to this right here, but here's where I want to position it, just kind of right in the middle. So if we were to think through this, I'm going to add a grid to this hero itself, and then I can set up template rows and template columns to place this exactly where I want. So let's come over here. And let's set this hero right here to have a display of grid. Now, if I think through the columns I want, I'm going to want one column right here, Everything else will take up the section and then an equal column on this side. Now I can declare this in a couple of different ways, but if I set grid template columns, probably the easiest thing to do is to use my fractional units. We're gonna say, give me something like one fraction here, four fractions here, and one fraction here. This is a specific unit you get with grid. So now immediately it tries to kind of place these things where it wants. You'll see that this is taking one part, four parts, and then finally one part over here. So I have to tell it where I want it to be, but at least we've got this set out the way we want. Now let's get rid of that just for a second so we can kind of remember what we want. If I come over here, here I want the card to come in about right here. So maybe I'd say something like five parts to one part. And then I actually want it to overhang a little bit. So I want a little bit down here as well. So maybe I'll do something like four to two to one. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna say grid template rows. And we'll say something like four fractions to one fraction. Oh, we said two fractions, I think, to one fraction. All right, now it's still not gonna know where to put things, but now I can position those exactly where I want them. So if I jump back over to my HTML, I just have an image tag and then I've got that hero card. So let's first of all, grab my image tag. Again, I'm just gonna use CSS nesting. That's now default in all modern browsers. And I'm going to position this very specifically. Now there are a couple of different ways to do this. I could give it a name and then set it up in my hero. I could also just declare where I want this to start and finish for both the row and the column. So I'm gonna do that with grid area like this. And then probably the easiest way to do this, I typically come inside here. And let's just select this whole section here. And you can see I already have that kind of grid layout right over the top. Now, if you don't see that, you should be able to come to this layout here and just make sure that you've checked on uh, the grid lines, show grid numbers. This is the one I have right now. You can also give them names, which we, I hadn't talked about in the last video. But now that I've got these visible with my dev tools, I know exactly where I want this to start. So I want this to start at 1-1, one, one, and I want it to go all the way to the bottom. Now, you can declare these as hard-coded values like 1-1 one, one down to 4-4. Four, four, or what I can do is do one, one, and then just do negative one and negative one. That will get me the last one as well. So now the image will span that entire section. Now notice it doesn't know where to put this, so it just creates an extra row for me. So now I get to position that as well. So if I come over here to my hero card, there's the declaration down below as well, but let's just say grid area. And here I want it to be somewhere right here, right? Two, two, down to four, three, right? Here's my four and here's my three. And I think I actually extended this slightly too long. So here I can come to the row and just go minus two. So it's slightly shorter. And here I think we said two, two, down to maybe three, four, almost right. So the final row would be four, the final column would be three. And now notice it's filling that entire section. Now here it's a little short and that's just because of some declarations I have this way where I have the 
width set to fit content. If I get rid of that, it'll now show exactly as you'd expect. Now here, I do have some spacing between here, but because it's a grid child now, and it's also a grid, it's not sure exactly how to space these things out. So one thing I could do is just come in here and say place items center. Once again, that will put all those things in the exact center, but notice it's still not positioned in the center. Now this is just the way I have like these internal grids structured. So you can see it is trying to put it in the center, but the entire content spans out this way. Now, if you remember from the last video, if you watched that, content has to do with the parent and how it fills its space. The items are how the individual cells are filled. So what I would need to do is actually come in here and change this to be content as well. And then now the content is in the middle and then the cell itself also pushes all of its content to the middle. Now, if I get rid of this, you'll notice that it's exactly what I expect just with a few declarations right here. Now you might say, well, it'd be a lot easier to absolute position this. But now as I move between different screen sizes, I might wanna change where these things live. And I could do that fairly easily now. Here, I would probably also wanna set this width to 100% and set the object fit to cover. So with these complex positioning options, as long as you understand how grid works, it's really easy to set things up as you want, especially as you start to get more responsive. Now I won't show you how to do that because we're gonna do that in the very next example. So let's jump over here to the fifth example. Here, where you might have a responsive grid. So I've got a couple items here, a header, a sidebar, main content, an image, several different cards. So let's come in here, close this down, and open up my fifth example. So here it is right here. Just down this way, we've got this responsive grid class. So as I move between different screen sizes, I might want to change where these things exist. So the very first thing I'm going to do is jump over this way, and let's go ahead and declare some basic styles. So here I'm just gonna set this as display of grid to start with. And then I'm going to take my header and my sidebar and my main content and add some background colors to it just so you can kind of see what's going on. All right, so I just had these tags set up as header, a side, article, and then I had a cards down this way. So those are kind of my four sections. Now I might want to display these differently. So for instance, on something like mobile, I probably want it to stack just like this. So there's not a lot of work I need to do. However, when I get to a different screen size, I may want to change those around and grid is the perfect place to do this. Here, I may want to grab my responsive grid and set this up a little bit differently. So the first thing I want to think through is how I want this to look on slightly bigger screen sizes. So if I pull this out to it's at least 600 pixels, here I might want to say I want the header up top still, but then I want to split this main content and I want to split these items down here, maybe right down the middle, for instance. So what I could do is come over here and set up my grid template columns. And I'm basically just going to repeat twice one FR, right? Now, I don't need to do too much with my grid template rows, but it tries to kind of figure out how I want this to look. Obviously, as I go down to smaller screen sizes, it snaps back down to my original plan. Now, as I come over here, remember I want the header to span all the way across, these two content sections to split, and the next two to split as well. Now, with something this simple, what I could do is simply grab my header, which again is just the actual tag, and I could set my grid columns here to span two. So all I'm doing is pushing this to both sides, and then everything else just kind of lays out as you'd expect. So that's one really easy way to switch stuff around. Now let's say as I get to a bigger screen size, so let's come over here, copy this down a bit. We're gonna change this to something like 800 pixels. So as I get a little bit bigger, I wanna make some more changes. And in this case, what I want is I'm gonna want this main content right here to take up the maybe three quarters of the width, the sidebar to take up only this section, but go all the way down to the bottom. Then below the main content, I might wanna keep these things separated. So now I've got some more complex needs. So let's come over here to my grid template columns. And here I'm gonna want something like one FR and then three FR. So one fraction and then three fractions. Now I also want a little bit more complexity here with my group. Now here I actually do need to set up some grid template rows as well. As I want a header right here, then I'm gonna have the sidebar go the whole width and then I'll have everything else right here. That means I'm gonna have three different rows. Now the way I want this to work is I want the header to only take up the space it needs. And the next sections, I just wanna split the height equally. Now here we're starting to get a little bit more complex. So one thing I could do is just keep this right here, right? It's still spanning that, that's just fine. However, another little trick you can do with grid is give these things different names. So let's come over here. We're just gonna give this grid area. We're gonna call it header. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for the next items as well. So if I come over here, this right here, this was an aside, we'll call it aside. This was an article, we'll call it article. And then finally we had cards. We'll call this grid area of cards. Okay, so I've given these all names, but it doesn't exactly know where they go yet. So let's pull this back up and just make sure that we can see our grid. That's always helpful for me. So right like this, here's what I want. And I'm going to separate these out exactly as I want them to land. So with my grid template rows and my grid template columns, and I've re-enabled that grid just so we can see what's going on here, I'm gonna set up a grid template areas. And here, what I'm gonna do is declare kind of the rows and columns I want. So up top, I want three sections here. Those will all be filled by my header. 
This next section will be filled both by my sidebar and my main content. And then here will be filled by my sidebar, the image, and the carts. I don't think I added the image, but we'll do that in a second. So right here, what I can do now is just declare this as header, header, and header. And I'm getting this from the name I gave it right down here. And the next section here, we've got the aside, and then article, and article. Again, that's what I called it. And then eventually, we've got my aside. And I haven't added the image yet, but we'll add it there in a second. And then the cards right here. Now, you'll notice that even though I didn't give this image a name, it kind of guessed where to put it. Let's go ahead and tell it explicitly. So I'm going to come in here and grab my image and just give this a grid area of image. All right, so now it explicitly knows to put it there. And notice how easy it was to adjust that. So here I go from my small screen size where it's all stacked to this next section where it's laid out exactly like that to now I've got the sidebar that spans the entire section, these two sections splitting the rest and the main content right here. So this is a really nice tactic for these kind of responsive grids that need to change as you move to different screen sizes. Now I would recommend that you keep these things all equal just so it's really easy to tell kind of where they are. And again, if you don't want something to be somewhere, so let's say you only wanted the header to go that far, just put a dot and it'll actually stop early there. I hope that helped you envision when you might reach for a grid. Of course, you might make different decisions, especially if you're very gifted with Flexbox. But for me, these are some examples of when I would tend to reach for grid over something like Flexbox. Having both in your toolbox allows you to always choose what you need for each individual scenario. And I hope this helps you envision how you might use grid. Well, thanks so much for watching. If you're interested more in these CSS videos, let me know in the comments below. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.